Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of With the Facts. I'm your host, Sydney Garrett. And I'm your co-host, James Junqua. As many of you know, early voting in North Carolina began on October 17th and ended on November 3rd. Election Day will be on Tuesday, November 6th. Let's have a look at some of our candidates. We have incumbent David Rouser running for the House of Representatives. Rouser is a Republican who looks eerily similar to Ted Cruz. Must be something in the water. Also running is Dr. Kyle Horton, who has a man's name despite being a woman, so she might just have a chance. WTF stopped in on Dr. Horton's recent visit to UNCW on October 22nd. Let's take a look. In terms of accepting all individuals and building an economy that works for all Americans, because instead what we are doing is moving things horribly backwards. We are attempting to move backwards in our energy policy to the dirty energy choices of the past with coal. And now my opponent is actually one of the few uh, Republicans or Democrats on the entire Atlantic coast who is pro-offshore drilling. Who, on the other hand, is ready to protect our coast? Democrat Harper Peterson is running for state senate. We also have Republican Michael Lee, who has one eye looking to the future and the other eye off to the left somewhere. There's also a libertarian running for the spot, but I mean, he's a libertarian, so. For the Board of Education, there are a number of compelling candidates, such as Paw Patrol character Judy Justice, as well as Janice Kavanaugh, who has an incredibly unfortunate last name to be running for office this year. We also have a Supreme Court justice controversy here in North Carolina. Running for Associate Justice of the NC Supreme Court is incumbent Barbara Jackson, whose boss is none other than the legendary elevator dealer, Sherry Berry. I guess you could say she's risking the task of justice and is hitting every button on her way to the top. Also running is Democrat Anita Earls, who wants to take away our state's only claim to fame, which is extreme gerrymandering. Her opponent is Chris Anglin, whose major experience in the judiciary branch is those vaguely threatening and slightly pathetic personal injury billboards you've most likely seen while out driving around. And remember everyone, North Carolina has amazing ways to accommodate voters. We currently have early voting, Sunday voting, mail-in ballot voting, and even curbside voting. That's right, you don't even have to get out of your car to vote anymore. Poll workers will come up to your window like an old-timey sonic drive-in restaurant if you need said services. And they may even get your slushy order right the first time. If that's not the epitome of customer service and Southern hospitality, I don't know what is. The only way we could possibly make it more Southern is if polling stations were at Bojangles and Black Americans' votes only counted for three-fifths of a regular vote. Our word of the week this week will be incumbent. Incumbent reverse to an official who is currently holding office. Now we will go to our newest anchor, Jack Kessler, for some international politics. Hello everybody, I'm Jack Kessler and today I'll be briefly going over the results of the Brazilian presidential election. The second round of presidential elections took place on the 20th of October. Brazilian voters had two choices, Jair Bolsonaro, running for the far-right Social Liberal Party, or Fernando Haddad, the candidate for the Socialist Workers Party. By the end of the night, the results were clear, and Bolsonaro had won by a clear margin of 10%. Bolsonaro is a former Army captain and congressional representative for Rio de Janeiro, who only recently joined the Social Liberal Party, but quickly boosted its popularity. Bolsonaro is running off of a platform of law and order, calling for the following, less restrictions on gun ownership, a harder stance on crime, Brazil aligning itself with the United States and NATO, and action to be taken against communist influence from Cuba, China, and Venezuela. Bolsonaro has become a divisive figure for many. This tension comes from inflammatory statements he has made in the past, such as, I am in favor of torture, you know that, the people are too, and I never hit my ex-wife, but many times I have wanted to shoot her. Whatever the world may think of him, however, Jair Bolsonaro now holds the reins of power in Latin America's most populated nation. Back to y'all at the desk. Well, there you have it. That Bolsonaro is one bold dude. Thank you, Jack, and thank you, everyone, for tuning in. I'm your co-host, James Dinkwa. And I'm your host, Sydney Garrett. Have an awesome week, and see you next time.